um, Charlie, before we record, I'm still not seeing the interpretation space options. Yeah, interpretation in Ukrainian or Russian. Please look at the slides on the screen to see how you can do that. Um, today, we have wonderful presenters from Novo Ukraine who are going to talk about career pathways um, and specifically networking and job searching in the U.S. market. Um, this uh, PowerPoint or this series of presentation is brought to you in partnership with uh, California Department of Social Services Refugee Programs Bureau and with the support of Nova Ukraine. Um, this is our last session for the Navigating Life in California for Ukrainian series. And we want to thank you all so much for attending and looking at our um, resources that we've shared with you all. Uh, supportguide.com will still be live and updated, so you can always access uh, past uh, recordings and presentations on that, as well as updated information. We will be doing some more series um, in the future, possibly, and we'll let you know via email if that is going to happen. Today, we're going to talk about networking for jobs in the U.S., um, factors in career growth, how to strengthen your resume, the professional expectations that are to come with that, and the next steps for job searching. We will not be covering any personal details, um, situations that do not concern networking or job searching, topics like immigration status, e EAD delays, and higher education, and enrolling in public benefits. As a reminder, um, you will be muted today so that pre presenters can um, get through their presentation. You can also select your preferred language. So again, we have interpreters from Nova Ukraine who are live interpreting in Ukrainian and Russian. There is a live Q&A session, which is where you can use to um, put in your questions, comments. Um, if you have the same question that someone else has, you can upvote that question. And at the very end of today, we are going to be sending out a survey, which would be um, really helpful if you have time to fill that out. Um, today, you're behaving from Solvera Consulting and Nova Ukraine. And I will let our uh, guest presenters go ahead and take it from here. Thank you, everybody, for coming. And uh, do you hear me clear and see me and everything working? Good. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the organizers, uh, Salvera team, and uh, of course, Novo Ukraine team for giving us uh, this opportunity today to share our experience uh, with uh, everybody he, who hopefully need it. Uh, my name is Ina, and I uh, was born and raised in Kyiv, where I studied and uh, did my PhD degree. And then uh, we, uh, with my family, in 1990, we decided to leave Soviet Union and uh, go to live in Israel. And uh, understand me correctly, I, we wanted to leave the Soviet Union, although it's never easy. And uh, as part of preparation to this move, we, uh, I was asking everybody uh, if they knew somebody in Israel uh, who, who went there now, who lived there earlier, before. So when we landed there, I had a notebook with addresses. Not many, maybe I had 10 contacts uh, with me, but it worked amazingly. I started to contact them on day two, and uh, uh, in two weeks, uh, thanks to this one of the contact, I was called for the interview in the Weizmann Institute and offered, uh, eventually offered a postdoctoral position, which was great for me. And uh, this is why three years later, 
uh, when uh, my husband got a job in uh, Germany and uh, we relocated with him, I applied the same approach, used all my contacts, my friends' contacts, my uh, boss's contacts, and uh, quite uh, easy and quick, I got even two jobs in Germany. So when the time came to go finally to uh, execute our final move to the United States, I was optimistic. Why shouldn't I find a job there? And I was so wrong. Uh, it took much longer and, my, and a lot of pain for me. For everybody in the world, uh, everybody in the world see the United States as a pinnacle of everything. It's a place where you get the best job, where you fulfill all your dreams, you get uh, everything, and you will be accepted uh, for, by the people who live there because they are like the same, like you, they also came from somewhere. And it's all true. Just one clause here, that uh, to achieve all this, you need to work much, much more, much harder and longer than anybody in the other places in the world. And um, that means uh, to send more resumes, to do more networking, to have more interviews and uh, more rejections too. Be ready for this, be prepared, be strong, and you will be there. The other thing is uh, typical for the United States that you're following here uh, your job. It's a big country, many companies, they will relocate you, but uh, you need to, you, to up, uproot yourself a few times till you find uh, finally the place where you will settle. And that's what happened to us. And uh, it took time for us to move to Bay Area, where we live now. The Bay Area, it's uh, Silica or Silicon Valley. It's a place which is notoriously famous for amount of startups, different companies, which uh, um, easy to appear and disappear too. So uh, you can find here a job, think easier than anywhere else, but uh, it's easy to lose it very quickly. And that's why you need always be on alert um, on alert to see what's going on in the other companies. Uh, that means do, to do a lot of networking. And uh, the, another my dream came through, it came true in uh, uh, Bay Area, that's I became a life coach. It's my second profession. And uh, that what prompted me uh, to offer uh, my services to Nova Ukraine and to you, uh, where I'm, doing, I'm combining my life coaching education and uh, also my personal experience to help you. And so please, there will be my email somewhere. Don't hesitate to contact me. Uh, our lives are similar in many ways, but they are also different in many ways. And uh, the main difference I see, please let's go to next slide. Uh, the main difference I see is uh, that uh, refugees, uh, or not say refugees, newcomers from our generation, immigrants, they were prepared. I was uh, as much as you can be prepared to such things. But uh, we were ready to overcome difficulties. We knew that uh, uh, the difficulties are in uh, the future, in front of us. The people who came here now, they, uh, many of them, uh, they were forced to come. They didn't want to, didn't plan to, were not ready mentally, they f fled. And uh, I, here now, they, some of them think that uh, the war is uh, over. Yes, there is no bombing and fires here, but it's a lot of difficulties in front of you. And uh, that's why you need to get ready 
and uh, keep your emotions and uh, get ready to fight to for yourself for your future and uh, uh, let me summarize uh, from what i uh, see please next slide uh, or here when i speak to the newcomers now there are some patterns which i would like to share with you uh, the people I was talking to, they are mostly over one year in the country. Uh, most of them are overqualified for their, uh, their job they're doing now. And they obviously would like to improve their working condition. And they're thinking what is uh, next for them? What should they choose? Should they choose uh, uh, what they know or something new? And uh, that's uh, the biggest questions that we are always discussing. Then I worked to women who called me, they are staying at home and uh, asking what they can do while they stay at home. And um, there are a lot of opportunities uh, for them too. Um, the other patterns that uh, I noticed, uh, they, uh, many people are underestimating their education, they, uh, which is very wrong because our education uh, is classic, it's very good and it is very valuable here. Sometimes it's necessary to, um, to get some credits, more credits, but it's very solid, good education, be proud of it. And uh, they are isolated in the immediate, commun the immediate community because of language and uh, because uh, of the obstacles. And uh, they like to stay in, com in the comfort zone. So one lady told me that uh, she lived through a lot of bad things uh, before she came here. And now she just wants to be in comfort zone and don't don't bother me. And I don't know why she called me because there is a news. Don't stay in comfort zone because uh, the comfort zone has a tendency to shrink and every day it shrinks into becoming smaller and it will become a cage eventually for you. So stretch it, get out of your com comfort zone every day and do something. Um, How motivated are you? It is, a, it is normal to have fears. Everybody has fears and complain on fears. There are many reasons to fears. The English is not good enough. I will not be accepted. Uh, I will be rejected and so on. It's normal, everybody have it. The, what is not good, not okay, is to get your fears to take over you. And uh, then you will be afraid to do anything. So if this happens to you, don't wait. If you cannot uh, manage your fears on your own, contact the professionals, go to practitioner, go to life coach, contact me. I, uh, I have the tools to help you. So please don't try to, to be in fear and uh, just uh, let take fear over. Uh, next, please. Oh, no, it's probably what is missing. Uh, one back, I'm sorry. What is missing? Uh, first of all, of course, let's talk about language. Uh, where to learn language? You, language is very necessary for you. However, uh, you don't need to wait till you learn it. You need to go ahead and start uh, working on your career, on your resume, on your networking, on everything. And try, it will help you with English, but try to master it as uh, quickly as you can. And for this, of course, you go to different uh, classes, ESL classes everywhere, uh, churches, book clubs, whatever you can find. Uh, uh, hiking groups, uh, go to your neighbors, read books, stop watching uh, TV 
in English, in Russian or Ukraine, switch to English TV, read books in English, think in English, talk to your family in English, and it will come to you. You, you will be surprised how quickly you will start uh, thinking in English and translate into your native language. The other thing that uh, I think uh, not uh, everybody understands the importance is to validate your diplomas. Because as I said, uh, it's easier to add a couple more points if you need, and maybe not, and you will be officially a bachelor, a master here, and uh, this will be a, um, a good help for you and a message to your employer, even if you're not seeking the job exactly in your field, it still will be a message that you can think, see big picture, you can think differently, you can summarize. Higher education, it's very important. It's difficult to get, it's expensive, so appreciate what, uh, we need to appreciate what we already have. A lot of people uh, are thinking that it's a good chance to change uh, uh, the work career, the, what we are doing. Uh, so it's uh, sometimes it is necessary, but uh, the recommendation here is First, try to utilize what you already have before you go to different education. It will be more time consuming and uh, more money will be involved. And also, even if you choose to do it, please remember, try to involve, include your current education and it's very important your values, what you stand for. Then it will be all right. So another thing that I noticed uh, it is very, everybody are using uh, um, Indeed as a job search engine. It's a great job search engine, but uh, there are many more out there. And uh, uh, look, Monster, Glassdoor, and uh, use them too. And also, I know, noticed people are using LinkedIn uh, but LinkedIn is not used correctly. It used also as job for job search engine when position is announced. However, LinkedIn was designed as a networking uh, site, and uh, you need to network through LinkedIn, make profile, get as many connections as possible. It it will help you enormously in the future. And of course, uh, resume uh, is not set in stone, need to be updated, but uh, this we will uh, talk later. Um, so let's go to, to the next slide. We talk about diplomas already, we talk about education. Let's, uh, let's go to the next slide. Um, and uh, I'm mentioning networking a lot here. So what is networking? And uh, I'm sure some of you, please next slide. Some of you know it very well, but uh, not everybody. So let's uh, remind that it is basically, it's a way to establish as many connections as possible. So in the big circle is you and your contact. Then you have a couple more contacts and that's it. But uh, otherwise, uh, there are many, each of them ha has their contacts. And by establishing a good networking system, you, you, can, um, you can contact all them. You can uh, tip into the contacts of uh, your contact, uh, their contacts and so on. It is extremely, extremely helpful. And as, uh, it is statistically known that uh, the most of jobs in the United States are found through network and uh, not through the job, just writing application and submitting your resume. So no, uh, officially not networking is uh, the process of making connections and building relationship. It's exchange of information and ideas. It happens in professional and social environment, formal and non-formal setting. 
and you're looking for useful information. Next, please. So to me, it's always uh, the idea of a uh, uh, fisherman who put his net, found, got fish. He did not know what, uh, what he will get. And uh, when he sorted through it, he left few useful fishes and the rest he just let go. So there are direct similarities. You don't know what you will get, but sometimes it will be very useful. You might even get a gold, golden fish somehow. Uh, there are direct and indirect benefits of networking. The, um, direct benefits are getting advice, uh, finding new job, validating your ideas, meeting people with similar interests, interact, uh, promoting ourselves, and sharing ideas. Next, please. How and when uh, to network? Uh, when is always. Anywhere you go, everything you are doing, use it for networking. And uh, the question where, there are many answers to it. There are professional group and societies, conferences, workshops, networking events, LinkedIn, and leisure time, and uh, non-related activities. Next, please. Um, yes. So talking about, um, about professional networking system, I want to talk here about um, about one uh, one example to give you one example is business networking international or bni for example uh, there is uh, uh, the chapters of bni uh, used to be everywhere i checked uh, they still exist it's a, a group of about 10 to 20 people who uh, who belong to different professions one it's a rule only one profession from each in this uh, uh, in this group, and uh, the idea is that uh, if some, uh, for example, you are in real estate and your um, colleague is a counter, and uh, if they ask your colleague to recommend a good real estate agent, they will uh, recommend you. They have to recommend you, and vice versa. So uh, it's, uh, it's very helpful to some occupation, not so much for engineers, but uh, for others like lawyers uh, or handymen, it's very, very useful. And uh, you need to convince them that they have to hire you. So you will be doing a short presentation there, like uh, it's called uh, elevator pitch, because uh, it's take time uh, from first to fifth floor for you to explain uh, the main things that wa you want to deliver to the listener. You, you need to be very short and to the point, and uh, you will be able to practice there on your elevator pitch. So how to network? You identify the company, set informational interviews, meet with individuals, showcase your competence, and uh, so on. So let's say I uh, decided to go to work for Google. I first ask through my network and through network, uh, through all my networking, I'm asking, do you know somebody who works for Google? And I try to locate them. I call them, I mail them, I uh, contact them through, through LinkedIn, and I talk to them. Is it through lunch coffee, Google is next door, or through, by phone, but I talk to them, and here I need to try to ask questions, I can, need to convince them that I know something, that I will be useful for the company, 
and I ask her to introduce me to hiring manager or to other people in the company. And uh, um, I will ask, maybe you can give me your resume, transfer your resume to the hiring manager. Next, please. There is one thing that I noticed uh, that uh, some people are waiting until position is open and only then send their resume. It's uh, not enough because many times, and I know it firsthand, that uh, when we open the position, we already have somebody in mind or um, we need to close, uh, to hire very soon. So we, we will just to take uh, the first uh, several resumes which we have. And it is very useful that you have uh, your resume already there in the file of the hiring manager or HR. So it will be there when position is open. It is, uh, it is very good to have it. Um, when you go to networking and please uh, differentiate uh, your networking from just having good time or schmoozing because uh, have a good time, you you know, you just go to the party and have good time, you don't care about anything else. When you do schmoozing, you go to the party, you are very nice to everybody, you talk to people, smile, ask for little favors. With networking, you are not asking for favors. You don't know what you will get. You just want people to know you better and uh, you need to know people better. That's your only Google goal. Be careful is going to networking and ask, I need your business, can you hire me? Don't do this, people cannot hire you and they will be avoiding you. Your goal is uh, just uh, to get this person interested in you and say, you know, I think you are a nice guy I unfortunately work in a different area, but I have a friend who works in this area and I definitely will introduce you to him. That's what you are looking for. Next, please. And when you are, uh, you are, you are uh, networking, please focus on your value. Don't forget about this. Uh, so when you, we talk about it, you may uh, schedule information and interview, utilizing all con contacts and uh, meeting in an informal setting, uh, use LinkedIn. I was, uh, I was uh, contacted through LinkedIn many times for help, for advice, for recommendation. I always did it. I hope uh, everybody will be doing it for you too. So, and have your elevator pitch ready. Next, please. This is an example uh, when you start elevator with some, with your future boss, you, he doesn't know it, and uh, you, and after the end of the ride, you, you shake hands uh, because he is ready already to uh, schedule interview for you. This is how your elevator speech, how good it was. Next, please. Uh, suggestions, tips, uh, put there what defines you, uh, what company can gain from hiring you, your strengths, and uh, the strengths are coming, of course, from your education, your family background, your country, your cultural background, and so on. Think about it and uh, try start working on your elevator pitch. Next, please. Uh, start networking immediately. Be bold, be optimistic, be persistent, stretch yourself. It is not easy. I am a shy person and I know how difficult it can be to go and uh, to talk to people to bother people, it is not easy, but uh, people are mostly nice to you. And when you're doing it all the time, uh, you're getting used to it and uh, it's actually becoming fun. You will enjoy it, I'm sure. And uh, you will meet so many interesting people. Networking never ends. Next, please. And uh, the last slide, general recommendations. 
be prompt. Uh, if you are going to miss your appointment, please let other people, other party know as soon as possible about it. Always write letter of thanks. It is expe expected from you. Thank you for your time uh, for, that you spent with me, that you heard me and put in it that, you know, I can do this and this and this. Don't sell yourself short. Be persistent and shoot for the stars. And at this, I am finishing my part and uh, Alex is taking over. Hey, good afternoon. Um, can you hear me? Huh? Yes, yes, we can. can. Thank you. Good, good. So, good afternoon. Next fall, please. My so it's uh, we are talking about uh, how to build this your resume. So, my name is Alexander Alex Trigup. I also. Uh, grew up and get got education in Ukraine, in Kyiv. Uh, I work at uh, different uh, academia and universities uh, in different countries, same countries that they already described. And then I moved to, to Bay Area to work for Intel Corporation. And from last year, I'm independent uh, technical consultant. And next foil, please. First of all, what is resume? So resume is not, resume is your tool to get your job. Uh, so in, in your resume, what you do, you, you list the key achievement and your key uh, milestone in your career. So it's important to know what is resume, but it's equally important what resume is not. Uh, so what resume is not? Resume is not your complete autobiography, or as you would say in Russian, Ukrainian, your enquete. You are not required in resume to list all your works, all your jobs, all positions that you hold. You need to list, however, important and relevant position and jobs relevant to the jobs that you're applying for. That is important. For example, for example, you are an accountant. You work as an accountant, you became department chief, you became chief financial officer. That's and you're applying for the job in this country of a senior accountant, something. But uh, you also, after work, you after high school, you probably maybe work as a technician, electrician technician. It's good, but you don't have to leave this because it's not relevant to your position. So be selective what you want to list on your uh, application. Uh, very important, do not exaggerate your achievement or your education or even, even more importantly, do not lie on, on your resume. That's important first. It's just a good habit to tell the truth. And second, it leaves you nothing to hide. To hide. And the short is that it's actually easy to remember. Truth is always easy to remember. Never lie on your resume because uh, next fall, please, there is an uh, unfortunate example of the infamous story of Scott Thompson. Scott Thompson was in 2012 for six months CEO, chief executive officer of the company Yahoo. They hired him, but it listed only six months because the eventually people found out that uh, Scott Thompson, for some reason, listed on his resume bachelor degree in computer science that he did not have. Not only bad thing he lied on his resume, even worse thing he did not need to lie on this resume and listed this invented degree because at that time he was hired. He was in a very high position at PayPal, another great 
technical company, you may all know PayPal. And he raised to the level of the president of PayPal. He would be hired just for this achievement. But uh, he did this. He was fired. He lost 20 million of his compensation. But it's not only for high ranking official. We personally know somebody who lied on his resume. He was in not very high position, but he invented master degree and eventually human resources, HR found out he doesn't have it. And he was, this person was fired. Uh, so uh, again, learning lesson, do not exaggerate your achievement next fall, please. Now, let's talk about your professional resume. What do you do on your professional resume? Uh, first of all, there is no right acceptable format for resume. It can be different format, different uh, coaches, drop search coaches or website. They may offer different format of uh, your resume. Uh, you have some flexibility in selecting the format that you like. Uh, however, it's very much advisable to use more or less format that is considered common, uh, acceptable. Uh, one thing that we don't do in this country, we don't place pictures on resume. They just take space. They don't provide any additional information about you. And it's very important. Absolutely no misspelling no uh, awkward grammar, no arrows, no typos on your resume. If a hiring manager sees that the applicants even did not uh, have time to, to correct those misspelling, the hiring manager would see what this person would do when I sign this person my project. So professional, good English, no misspelling no errors on your resume. Uh, next fall, please. Um, and talking about how do you build your professional resume? It should be brief and concise. The rule of thumb is for most people, one page is enough. For very experienced people, you can go maybe to two pages. For the people who apply at very high position, uh, maybe you can use three pages. Remember that your resume is being read by, by human or by artificial intelligence, and none, nobody has time to read through all your multiple pages of resume. You need to list brief and concise information which is relevant to positions that you are applying for. You may have other experiences and very good skills, but just remember that people don't have time to read through your resume. So when you, in, you need to customize your resume, it's not set cut in stone. You need to customize your resume for, for each position for which you are applying. Uh, resume is a flexible tool. <laughs> It's not built uh, for all cases and for all position. So you use for your position that you're applying for customized resume, but when you place your resume on the side like LinkedIn, uh, you can use a more generic resume. Okay, so let's go to the next foil, please. It's just to summarize what we are talking about, strategy of writing, building your resume. You need to emphasize your relevant skills. And you do it at the very beginning of your resume. You, there is a section may call summary or something like this. At the very top of your position, you release immediately relevant skills to catch attention of the human resource or hiring manager to you. You list your experience chronologically, but uh, you may emphasize something that the job that you, in chronological order, you kept, but it does, it's not relevant to your current position. 
you may emphasize this, you may just leave this was a job without writing all details about what is the job was about. And second, uh, uh, you use, you list your professional experience, but you do not just list them, you say what you have achieved, what's the impact you had. For example, you were a marketing manager, you don't just list, I was a marketing manager at XYZ Corporation. You say, I was a marketing manager at this corporation, as, as a result of my work, I save 100,000K to, to my company or some tangible some tangible achievement, very important to list on your resume. Not list of your position, but with each position, what have you achieved? Next fold, please. And let's look at the example of how you build your resume. Next fold, please. Let's say you apply for the job and you see description of this position listed here. And by the way, it's the real, I'll buy the abbreviated, a description of the position that I was looking myself at one, one time. So first of all, you try to determine what are the keywords in this position. You can see polymer ones, you can see polymer another one. You see a couple of times they say polymer, so polymer is a keyword. We highlighted it in yellow. Then you go and see for standards, couple of times at least Standards, you highlight standards. Standards is a keyword. And so on. You can see that education, uh, polymer degree. So on your right column, you try to list mentally for yourself or in written all keywords that you found out here. You found out polymer, you found out standard, and so on. Now you know that when you apply for this position, at the very beginning, it would be good for you to right away to list all these keywords from this position. Next fold, please. This example of your resume is very short excerpt of this, but you list your name, your degrees, PhD, MBA, Master Science. You list your phone number, your email, your LinkedIn profile is a very good habit to list your LinkedIn profile. And you just, at the very beginning, is the summary of your skills. You list all the summaries that are in keywords. You list polymer, you list standard, and all other things. You let people know that you meet the criteria in terms of your skill. And when you list your professional experience, again, you say your job scope, uh, it was polymer, it was metrology, but also in blue now, you list what you have achieved. So here you write, for example, you completed five projects with three companies. You have been awarded by certain awards. That's key achievement that you highlight on your resume. Of course, we don't go through the whole resume, but it's just to give you an idea how to build your resume. And next fall, please, again. Uh, there is a always question, how to explain the break in your career. So in this, this country, there is no stigma, no bad feeling about having career breaks. Uh, people have different circumstances. Uh, you don't need to hide your career breaks, but you may want to explain why you have it and what you have done during the career breaks to enhance your skills. For example, you had career breaks, but you were learning some new skills. Next foil, please. And another thing, it's a very, it's a kind of new question, but a popular question people ask about, do you need to use ChatGPT in building your resume? And many coaches, uh, job search coaches, they indeed advise you to use ChatGPT. And yes, you use ChatGPT is Absolutely okay to use ChatGPT, but you don't need to blindly rely on ChatGPT version of your resume. You need to look at this. You need to give it human touch. You need to correct it. Remember, ChatGPT is the only tool for you to build your resume. 
do not ask ChatGPT artificial intelligence to build resume for you. It would not work very good. Next one, please. Now, about job search. Uh, uh, okay, next. Next fold, please. So when you do job search, you may divide it on active and passive job search. Passive job search, you put your resume, your generic version of your resume on the website, such as LinkedIn and hiring manager who are looking for right people may or may not look at your uh, resume. So presently it's not high probability that you would be hired by this way, but you still do this. An active job search, you look for the positions that are available and first you build your resume uh, that is customized for this position. You try to find uh, somebody who, with who you have contact in this company, may have contact and uh, try to connect and find out more about this job. And next fold, please. Um, and, and yeah, and by the way, when you try to connect it with somebody and you receive response, don't forget to say it, to thank them. Thank you for your uh, responding, for you responding to me. Thank you for the recommendation of this connection and so on. So when you work on your job search, when it's, it's useful to have it organized for yourself. For example, you set up weekly or monthly goal. You set up the goal to research five companies or three companies a week, to set up connection with three people, five people, whatever, a month. And, uh, but you also, very important, set up the goal, do not exceed. If you do not set up the goal, do not exceed, you can be lost and uh, in this work on your job search uh, because it's uh, the searching the job is the toughest jobs that people has that people have <laughs> so try to try to not to be immersed in this job search too much all the day set up the goal do not exceed like I don't know, six hours a day, no more than eight hours a day. You need to leave time for yourself, for your family. Uh, otherwise, you would become non-productive. Avoid sending mass production of your resume, the same, not customized resume, to multiple job opening. It's uh, very low effective. It almost never worked. But it takes all your time. And... Uh, Resist the urge, as I say, desperately sending a resume to, to anybody all the day, 24, 7 a week. Okay, next, next quote, please. And we wish you luck. And uh, the statistics tell us that the absolute majority of applicants, sooner or later, they find the job they want. Sometimes they stay on this job for a long time. Sometimes they Try to find even better job. It's busier to find new job when you already have another job. And uh, again, good luck to you. And we hope that everything <laughs> will work out for you. And uh, I'll give the floor to, to Salvera now. Hi. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. Um, for sharing that information. Here's oh, sorry. One, one last, sorry. It's a summary. The summary of, so networking is crucial in establishing yourself. In your resume, it is tangible achievement and relevant experience. Use every opportunity to, to speak English. Do not underestimate the importance of personal contact. Use LinkedIn in full capacity. Believe in yourself, move forward, and shoot for the star shown on this picture. Now, now I'm giving the floor to Sabrina. Thank you so much, Alex and Ina. Um, we will share your email addresses because I believe that you are offering free 30-minute uh, consultations with clients. That's correct. Thanks for reminding. 
Okay. Yes. So um, you can uh, reach out to Ina and Alex in the email addresses pr provided in the chat box, but we will also upload it on the support guide website. Um, so we'll also have additional resources um, that you can utilize if you're applying to jobs yourselves or you are supporting clients who are looking for uh, new jobs. All of this will be posted on supportguide.org by the end of today or tomorrow. Um, and we will have the links emailed out as well. Here's another reminder that county has employment programs um, called VESSEL, ES, and ELL. All of these are specialized programs that you should have access to if you are looking for specific employment services. And then we also still have a support guide up if you are looking to find employment service providers in your area or close to you please go to support guide and use our amazing map feature that can help you locate uh, the type of services that you're looking for. Um, and as always, you can visit um, California Department of Social Services, Refugee Program Bureau sites to also um, look for job and training links. Um, again, wanted to emphasize supportguide.org, Nova Ukraine, and IRC um, can be great resources for Ukrainians looking for employment services. And as I said, mentioned before, after the session, you will receive um, the slide deck, reference links, um, and a survey that will be really helpful so you can provide feedback for today's session. You can ask additional questions. We will email back to you. Um, and even though this is our last session, we always like to hear if there are any suggested future topics for you. Um, we've got no questions in our Q&A box. Um, so I'm assuming that no one has any questions for today. But if you do, um, you can use that box or you can email us in the survey and we will get those answers to you. Uh, we're coming up on the 11 a.m. hour, which commences the end of this uh, presentation. Thank you all so much for attending today, um, for attending all of our webinar series that we've hosted this year. And a really big special thanks again to Ina and Alex for making the time and coming today to share this knowledge with everyone. Thank you, Alex and Ina. I hope everyone yeah. has a great day. And thank you also to our amazing interpreters from Nova Ukraine. Uh, we could not do this work without you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you, Charlotte. Charlie. Thank you.